Hmm. Hello. Smart here. Um. <laughs> oh, how do I get that out of the way? Oh. I don't know. Um. I just went in this morning and checked. Uh, again, on um, the Kickstarter thing, you know, and that's and that's the thing, you know, it's it's like I have I have twenty four hours uh, to go. Um, ten backers and three hundred and forty eight dollars of my twenty five hundred dollar goal to you know get to get uh, Goblin issue one and issue two printed. You know, I wanted to do um, wanted to get physical copies of the books um, printed. And, um, it's, it's pretty certain that, you know, the Kickstarter campaign is going to fail. And, um, you know, I kind of came to terms with it um, about, well, honestly, about a month ago when there was absolutely no response from the beginning. And it's just one of those things, you know, where I, I knew Kickstarter would be a gamble anyways, but, um, it's, it's one of those gambles that you take. I mean, nobody really loses in the end in this, really. Um, no one that's that's pledged any amount of money will lose because they none of the money get they don't get charged. And um, well, I guess I I wouldn't say that I <laughs> don't lose because I feel like you know I feel kind of like I lose because um, I lose that opportunity. It feels like at least I don't know. I mean, I guess you can always try again but I don't know um the lack of response really makes me go why you know and that's the thing about you know Kickstarter it's just kind of I've, I've seen other people's uh, campaigns not you know not get successfully funded and I've seen a lot that have um and some that you know I'll look at them and what it'll, what it is about them is it makes me sort of look at their work, look at my work, and go, okay, so why why wasn't I successful? Um, and, and and this is the the problem that I have with Kickstarter. It's sort of this this weird thing, this sort of psychological thing. Um, it just kind of messes with your head, and so you're sitting there and you're going, okay, well. Why wasn't my project successful? What was it about me? Is it me? Is it the work? I mean, is the work not good enough? You know, uh, it casts these huge, these sh huge shadows of self-doubt. You know, it's it's like, is the work not good enough? Can people not relate to the characters? Do they not care about them? I mean, does is everything unlikable about the story, about the characters, about the about the you know just the book? Um, or is it something else? I mean, is it me? Am I not social enough? Am I not outgoing enough? Am I just not in the right place at the right time enough? You know, like, I mean, I don't, I don't get a, a chance to really get out to conventions uh, at all because it takes money to, you know, do conventions and I'm unemployed. So, yeah, you know, and Goblin doesn't generate enough money on its own to... Um, to actually uh, get me to a convention, it generates enough for me to buy a bottle of peanut butter. <clears throat> really? Uh, yeah, I've earned about two dollars in the last couple of weeks off of advertisement. Um, but uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> maybe that has something to do with it. Whatever. That whatever attitude. Um. I don't know, it's just, but it, it really does, it makes me really think, you know, I mean, maybe I just didn't get the word out enough, but how do you get the word out enough? I mean, it's just, I, I, I follow a lot of guys who, well, they say they're not that successful, you know, um, but Well, I guess I could, I, you know, I can see it. Some of them, yes, they definitely don't make a living off of their books, but they don't do terrible. You know, they, um, they're able to fund their projects, you know, like they're, when they wanted to print their comic, it, the Kickstarter campaign 
did in some cases more than well. Um, but then it goes beyond that. I mean, you know, they can raise enough money to, you know, to do conventions. They get a lot of fan support. Um, and I just, I kind of wonder if it has to do with how social they are. And I know I'm not, I'm not that social. Like I'm on DeviantArt because DeviantArt is a really nice, comfortable place to be. I mean, it's, it's a perfect environment for an artist, but then I'm not really on Facebook. Goblin is on Facebook. I'm not necessarily on Facebook. I have like an old Facebook account from, oh my goodness, like six, seven years ago or something. I don't know. From when I was in college. And uh, it was, I had to have one in order to communicate with a particular client. And after that job was done, I, I stopped updating it. I don't like, I don't know. I didn't care because I was on, you know, I, I, I don't know. I had other things to do. I was, in, you know, while I was in school, I, you know, I don't know. Um, but my thing is just, I, I'm too busy working on the comic book to sit and um, spread myself super, super duper thin on a million different uh, social networks. You know, it's like I'm on Google Plus and I'm actually on Google Plus as Solomon Mars, you know, um, I should probably mention that my Facebook isn't in the name Solomon Mars. I used a fake name because I didn't want people from like my, my high school and stuff going, oh, my God, hey, it's been so long. And it's like, you didn't even talk to me in high school. Come on. Don't talk to me now. Um, anyways, <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, I wonder, though, if, if it has anything to do with that. You know, I'm just not super duper social. You know, I'm not on Twitter and things like that. And I'm barely on, like, Tumblr. You know, Tumblr is, like, chaos. You know, it's like just throwing your stuff into the middle of a, a full stadium of people. You know, just throwing, like, one pamphlet out. You know, that's what it's like to me. But um, I don't know. I mean, I'd rather spend my time actually making these stories and entertaining people than sitting on social networks all the time. I mean, but apparently that kind of thing uh, works against you. You know, having that attitude works against you because some of the people that I've seen most successful with their Kickstarter campaigns have been people that are really, really social, but they don't produce a whole lot of work is the problem. But I don't know, maybe their readers don't care that much. I care as one of their readers because I, I read their, their, um, their post, their blog post. And, and they're always talking about how much they wish that they could, you know, do the, their particular comics full time. And it's like, well, you probably could if you just sat down and actually did the book full time and kind of put everything else as a, sort of part-time job, you know? Um, but, I don't know. It's just, it's kind of weird, you know, the effect that Kickstarter has, you know, as you're, you're sitting there from the day you launch it, you know, to the day it ends, and you're watching it tick down, watching that clock tick down, and, and, and you become more and more depressed the longer the days go, and the closer it gets to the deadline, and the further away from your goal you are. You know, you realize you're running out of time. And here I am at 24 hours. And it would literally take a miracle for it to happen. And I don't know. At this point, I'm kind of like, well, do I want it to even happen? You know? Um, do I mean, really? Do I even really want it to happen? Um, just because... Goblin initially started out as a digital book. I wanted it to just be digital. I wanted it to be read online or on tablets, you know, and uh, originally I wanted it to be read on phones, you know, like little iPhones and stuff like that, because you know, that, that was what was out at the time when I first brought the, uh, the book out, uh, you know, the iPhone and, you know, uh, smartphones like the iPhone were, um, were out. Uh, the tablet... You know, like tablets hadn't come out in full force just yet. 
Um, but when they did, you know, I was just like, oh, that's perfect. Yeah, I'll just keep going forward. And um, I didn't want it to be printed because I knew it was going to be just a problem. I was going to cuss. I decided not to cuss. <laughs> but uh, I knew it was going to be a problem, you know. Was, this is going to be a problem just getting it printed. I knew it was going to be expensive, which it, it did turn out to be. It's a very expensive book, um, Goblin. It's like $21 to print a single issue. Uh, and that's, you know, to print it and to get it shipped. And I make literally a dime um, off of that. And that's, yeah, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It just, it's not cool to me. Um, and I was I was okay with it for a little while. And then it just really sunk in. It really sunk in, and I just decided that I that Kickstarter was all wrong. It was all wrong because it really it should have been about me trying to get support for the digital version of the book, trying to get more support so that I could keep doing the book really for free. Um, you know, uh, finding ways to kind of get the word out. I should have been raising money so that I could advertise more so that I could do, do conventions and, um, and get the word out a little bit more and, and actually so that I could put the book, the digital version of the book in a couple of, you know, online stores, you know, like the Kindle store, you know, I guess that's Amazon or something and, and Nook and the Apple store and, uh, have it, you know, on the Android platform, you know, all these, all these things like, like, like graphically, they'll actually put your stuff in all those different stories, but it's like $135 per book. And I mean, you know, you can do the math really quick, maybe. And I have currently 25 issues of Goblin. That's a lot of money. And which is the reason why I haven't done it yet. Um, I've been talking to them for, uh, maybe six months or so, um, since the beginning of the year, really, uh, the beginning of 2012. And I don't know, um, the problem was that it cost money. I mean, they have sort of a, a free version, but it, you can only really, it can be posted on Facebook and on your personal website. And it's like, well, I already posted, on, I already post my comic on my personal website and I can post it on Facebook if I want. I'm, I'm, I need it to, to be out there and sellable. You know, and, and they're, you know, high quality PDFs. I've done, I've already made them uh, into those. Um, they are for sale on the site. I just need to, uh, I need to repair the store. Um, there was a problem with it and I shut, I shut it down. And I have to, I have to finish repairing that problem and then bring it back up. But, I mean, I don't know, Kickstarter, man. It's just, it's, I, I mean, I've talked to a, a, a lot of, a lot of these guys who have uh, been fairly successful, you know, pretty well, 100% successful at, uh, or <laughs> at, at their, their Kickstarter campaigns. And the thing that they always say is, well, you know, not every project is going to be successful. Um, it's kind of a, it's a hit or miss sort of thing. And who knows what it is that determines uh, the success of a project um, because it's not just about making a, a nice video and it's not, it's certainly not about having, um, like beautiful art in your book or a brilliant or, or hilarious story or anything like that. It's all these tiny little factors that come together, little bits of all those different things and, and maybe some other things that come together and, uh, make the campaign successful. It also has to do with the artist. Um, and maybe the way that they project themselves. Maybe I don't project myself in a positive way. Uh, <laughs> I guess even with like recordings like this, where I'm just kind of like mopey and, uh, and stuff, but I, you know, it, it's something I can't help. You know, you wake up in the morning. I mean, I just woke up, it's almost eight and I, I went in, and I checked because I get some some weird sort of updates in my inbox, uh, my email. And I went and I checked and and then I saw, oh, man, there's only 24 hours left. And then I see 
how many people uh, supported me. And I, you know, I'll be angry for a second because you know this is sort of like sort of my journal, and this has this has to do with comics. This is my personal sort of journal uh, about comics making, and I can be angry for a few seconds. Um, I'm kind of upset that none of my family supported me on this. And yeah, actually, you know what? L let me actually talk about that for two seconds, more than two seconds. None of my family supported me, uh, except for my aunt and my uncle who live in Virginia. And, um, they were some of the first people to see back in the day in, in, uh, in 98 when I first started self-publishing. Um, they were some of the first people that saw me making comics. And uh, I actually worked with my uncle, the one who, who supported. Um, I worked with him at Georgia Tech. And um, he saw me, you know, when I would, on, on my breaks, and sometimes not on my breaks, while I was sitting there waiting for some call to come in, you know, where someone broke their computer because they were stupid. And, um, and he would see me and I was, I was creating, you know, the Bible for, uh, you know, you know, they call it the, a Bible when you have all the facts and stuff and, you know, all the character designs, everything that you need to sort of, well, certainly if you're going to pitch the story to like a network, but definitely, you know, as a guideline for the way that the series is supposed to be, uh, you know, it's, it dictates the way the series is supposed to flow. Um, it's, it's something that's done more in animation than I think comics, but who knows? I've, I've never met a, a comic book artist who has a, um, or a creator that has um, a, a Bible for their, their comic. Um, I've seen plenty for animation. But anyways, he saw me creating one. It was just, I, I don't know. And um, it was for the series Myth of Eustro um, that at the time was not called Myth of Eustro. It was called something else. I'm not going to, I've talked about it in a different, a different um, video. But um you know, he, they were the only ones that supported me. My my dad apparently tried to support me, but it didn't work. He he got halfway through the process, and then it timed out on him or something. And he called and told me, "Hey, I tried," and then he left it at that. Um, my mom didn't even try, and all my aunts and uncles, none of them tried. Uh, one aunt called and said, well, why didn't you just send letters to everyone in the mail and, you know, have them send you the money directly? And it's like, well, because this was, a, this was, you know, it was more than just about my family, you know, it's, I, I don't know. Um, and it was just, it's kind of upsetting that uh, I didn't get support from my family, but I'm the, <clears throat> oh, sorry. <clears throat> early in the morning so I'm a little groggy still um I'm the only artist I'm the only artist out of all my family I mean my dad technically is an artist he, he doesn't do anything anymore um he hasn't done anything since he was well younger than me um wow yeah since he was in his early 20s wow um but I mean I'm the only artist in all of my, my, you know, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, as far as I know. Um, not the only creator. I'm certainly not the only creative person. I've seen plenty of creativity from uh, a lot of them, but I'm the only one that pursues it as a passion to this extent. Or, no, that's not true. I'm the only one that pursues art in this form uh, with this this degree of passion, you know, this intensity. Um, because like I said, you know, the, the aunt and uncle that supported me, uh, my aunt, um, she actually is a writer uh, and she's pretty passionate about it. She's chasing that dream, which I always thought was kind of cool, you know, um, because my mom, her sister can write and my sisters, both of my sisters, my, uh, my uh, two of my sisters, you're right, I have three. <laughs> but um, uh, two of them can write. They don't really pursue it too much. Um, not to the extent that I would like. But I, I just, I don't know. I the, My problem with it is that I feel like 
the failure of this Kickstarter is going to be used against me. Um, in the same way that my lack of success over the years, as far as, you know, not really turning the, the whole comics thing into a form of uh, sustainable living wage, um, as some of them would put it, um, a real job. Um, the inability to turn my comics into a livable wage um, I feel like it's going to be used as cannon fodder, this whole Kickstarter thing. Um, yeah, no, I, I do. I feel like it's going to be used as cannon fodder as, as sort of a I told you so kind of situation where they're going to be like, well, look, the Kickstarter thing didn't, it didn't work out for you. It didn't, it wasn't successful. So maybe you should just kind of give up on this, you know, get a, get a real job. Um, which has been said to me before. And in fact, I, I, I honestly think that I mentioned this in a video or a recording or something. I have like a million podcasts that I haven't uploaded or, or whatever. But I did get a phone call from my dad uh, a couple of weeks back. And he literally told me to give up. He told me to go get a job. He said, you know, McDonald's is hiring. He said, yeah, you could work at McDonald's or, or Walmart. And I'm like, I used to work at Walmart. You knew that. You know that. You know I was unhappy working at Walmart because it, it took up all of my time. It didn't allow me to go to any conventions. It didn't allow me to pursue my dream. And when I wanted to go to school, they would not change my schedule, rearrange my schedule, even though they, they said they, they needed me there. They, they, they wouldn't adjust the schedule so that I could go to school and still work there. They said they literally told me to pick. And so I made my choice and I went to school. But it's, I don't know, it's weird, you know, I mean, come on, you know, I'm here, I, I feel, I feel guilty sitting here confessing these stories as if other people don't have uh, stories like this, as if other people don't have hardships and headaches and uphill battles. I mean, you know, I always think to myself, well, you know, you're, you know, I mean, you have it pretty good. You're, uh, you're not in some war-torn country. You at least get to express yourself in this way. I am grateful for that. I just, I don't know. Um, you just can't help but want that one thing that you feel like is going to make you happy and that one thing is just if I could do this full time and make a living off of it instead of kind of feeling guilty because I feel like I'm like I'm uh I don't not really mooching because I'm not mooching I mean like I've said you know I make enough money off of uh my work not not really the comics work but just doing freelance art here and there to feed myself, certainly, but not to ever pay rent again, um, not to be able to pay rent and uh, pay my car note and things like that. The uh, amount of hustling that uh, an artist has, has to do in order to do that, you know, like as a freelance artist is ridiculous. Um, you can get burnout really quick. Um, but I guess even in comics, you still have to hustle. And I mean, I know that from just doing a bunch of conventions over those over the last few years and stuff. Last decade, I guess I could say. Wow. It's really been a decade. It's freaking me out. But I don't know. Um gosh, I've just been sitting here with this stuff open, just not even doing anything. I guess cuz I was thinking, but I'm kind of tired of talking. <laughs> um I don't know. I I don't know exactly what the point of this recording was. Other than just kind of to wallow in self-pity and to try to think of a way around to all of this chaos I, and trying to figure out what is it, you know, I mean, you can't, because you can't help but think something is wrong with yourself. It's like, is something wrong with me? Something wrong with the work? You know, why doesn't it work? Why doesn't any of it work? You know, you know, you, you think you would think you know and i'm sure a lot of artists do this where you you sit and you think well 
technically I should be successful. And I, I'll be the first to say, heck, I'm not the first to say, but I will come out and say, I'm a terrible businessman. And I, and the art school that I went to had one business class. And I'll, you know what? I'm going to cuss. It was the shittiest business class I've ever had in my life. It was terrible. The guy teaching it shouldn't have been teaching business class. Yeah, if you're listening to this or watching this, dude, you know who you are. I'm calling you out. I won't call you out by name because, you know, it's just not worth it. But um, it was a terrible business class. And I I don't know. It's it's the kind of thing where you can sue the school over how the how the courses were handled. But what would be the point of that? You know, really, what would be the point of that? All that money caught up in some in some case. No, but um, I'm not I'm not really that kind of person, you know, and and. It's, you have to keep pushing for it, you know? and But you can't help but wonder if there's something wrong with something that you're doing, you know? And I, I, I do think about that. It's like I think about my location. I'm in Atlanta. There's not a huge comics scene in Atlanta. The comic scene seems to happen on the West Coast more than it does on the East Coast, or at least the Lower East Coast. I mean, there are a lot of self-publishers, don't get me wrong, but we're all trying to make a living off of this and none of us seems to know how and then i i look at um the fact that there just aren't that many conventions happening certainly in georgia there are not a lot of comic conventions happening in georgia and it's hard to get outside of georgia to the conventions in the surrounding states and i don't know this is turning into me just rambling about comics and I guess it's just, it's, that's what you get. You get a chain reaction of thought. You know, it's, it's a thought process, you know, when you, when you think about Kickstarter and you think about if it succeeds or if it fails and you start thinking about all these different things and I don't know. Um, all I can do is exactly what I'm doing now, sitting down another day and just, doing what I do best and that's make comics tell stories and hope that one day it will pick up uh I'll generate more traffic to the site certainly I want to I god I want to generate more more traffic to the site so I can use these ads to uh sort of generate some money um eventually I have to pay for the domain name but that's a little ways off but I, I don't know um it's not about it's not it's certainly not just about the money but it's one of those things when you have family members yelling at you and it feels so weird as a grown man to have my family members still talking to me like I'm 15 because this is exactly how it felt when I was 15, 16, heck, all the way till I, like, when I was 21 and, uh, you know, I made the decision to self-publish and to pursue art. And everyone was like, whoa, I don't know about that, you know, and it still feels the same, you know, at 30. Yeah, I don't know, it, it feels the same, you know, where I guess maybe I put myself in that situation you know, but everyone, you know, that knows what it is that they're passionate about and really wants to pursue it, you can't help it. You can't help it. It's like, it sounds weird saying it's an addiction, but, you know, creation, you know, doing this, this creative process, telling stories, drawing, and just being an artist, you know, it's, it's, it is kind of a, an addiction. It's a, it's so much a part of you in a way that you express yourself and, 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 that uh, you you want to do that all the time, it, and, you know, and it's it's this weird sort of driving force in you, and non-artists just they really don't get it. I I think to a degree, I I honestly think that they do they get it more than they they let on. They just don't want to tell you that they get it because. It's not something that they can do. I'm not saying that there's a bit of jealousy there, but there is sort of this, it's, um, it's something other than jealousy. It's, 
not exactly anger, but it's um, it's a weird sort of thing, you know. When and I'm not saying all non-artists. I'm talking about those ones that try to stop you, you know, those ones that that try to uh, to kick you when you're down and or to even knock you down, you know, tell you that what you do isn't good and and tell you that uh, you, you know you should give up and you know. My my bit of advice is don't listen to them. Just keep doing what you do. Lord knows I'm going to keep doing what I do. Um, to a degree, it's almost all I can do. It's about, it's it's really the the thing I do the best. You know, it's it's my most, I don't, it's, it's what I do the best. Um, I don't know. And uh, I'm going to keep doing it. Because it's what I want to do. It's I wake up in the morning and my head is just just swirling with ideas, you know, story ideas, and 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 having figured out what to draw next in the in the book, and uh, character designs, and you know, all sorts of stuff. Just ready to go every morning, you know. Sometimes I can't fully sl I can't sleep through the night because ideas are popping in my head and waking me up. It's so ridiculous, but uh, fun. I don't know. And, and it's, it's just trying to explain how that works to people, you know, that it's not, it's not just, it's not a, it's not a magic trick, you know, it's not, it's not like do, 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 do. And you make, you know, art, you know, it's, it's a part of you. It's like this thing that flows out of you. It, it's, it's, it sounds all hippie and mystical and crap like that, but it's, it is, it's, it's, this, it's a part of what it is to be human. You know, it's like love, you know, it's like hate, it's like fear, it's like happiness. It's like this emotional expression that express, it, it comes through in a very physical way. Um, and, and that's the artwork, you know, and um, how do you explain that? to someone who doesn't do it. How do you explain that? How do you explain this thing that you want to do with the rest of your life to someone who does something, in some cases, completely opposite of that? I have no idea how, how you get through to them. But ugh, I would love to. I would love to be able to get through to them, my family, because they do not get it. They, I, I, I guess because I've been doing it for so long. I've been drawing since I was a little bitty kid. So to them, it just looks like I'm doing the same thing I was doing when I was 10. And it looks like I'm just having fun. It doesn't look like I'm working hard. Like it's, it's one of those psychological things, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you get those people that believe that you have to work uh, hard in the sense that it has to be physically exhaustive. And it has to be, you know, you have to feel it. It has to be like labor intensive in order for it to be considered true work. And that's a ridiculous idea. It's a ridiculous notion. I mean, considering the history of civilization and the importance of artists and, and craftsmen through history, um, it's labor intensive, yes, but it's, it's a labor of love. It's the kind of thing where you, you feel good in uh in this way where you feel sort of like emptied out you know for the day where it's just kind of like you've gotten this this weight off of your chest off your mind you know and off your shoulders where you're just like accomplished you know it's not like um i, I don't know it's 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 not the kind of it's not Exactly. I mean, I guess for some, probably it is. It's, it's a stressful job. I mean, yeah, it can be stressful, but it's not the kind where you, you, I don't, I don't even know how to explain it um, without being really negative. And I, I, that's the thing. I, I've, I think I feel like I've been negative enough in, in this recording and, uh, it's just, it baffles me, though, um, the whole process of creation, you know, creating comics and art and 
being successful at it and all the different degrees of success, uh, the different types of success, and the one that will on the only one that will count for my family, and that's being uh, financially successful. And how do you get to that point? You know, and that's what I'm trying to figure out. How how do you get to a point where you're financially successful to the to the point that you have um, a basic degree of financial stability? Because I'm sorry, there's no such thing as true financial stability, even for someone who's like a multi-billionaire. There's no such thing as financial stability because one day you have it. The next day you might not. You can lose it all in a day, literally. It's happened. Um, but <laughs> I, I'm not trying to be a millionaire. I just want to pay the rent. I don't know. So I'm going to keep trying. I'm certainly going to keep trying to figure it out. And uh, I don't know. In the meantime, maybe I'll just make some, uh, some good comics, make some good stories entertain some people and even myself all right well i rambled on long enough maybe depressed a couple of people i'm sorry if i depressed anyone but like i said these are kind of my little journals but i i kind of just want to share my thoughts you know there's no 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 sense in keeping it all bottled up and to yourself you know i don't know i don't keep my stories to myself i might as well not really keep all my thoughts to myself some of them i'll keep to myself not all of them but, um, I don't know, whatever, dude. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe I'll try another Kickstarter. But I'll actually do the thing that I said I was going to do. I'll keep Goblin Digital like it was supposed to be in the beginning. And I will try to raise the money to sort of get it out there. Um, one of those things that I'm trying to figure out is, how do you sell a digital comic at a physical comic book convention. I know a couple of artists that have been trying to do it, trying to figure it out. And I don't think any of us have been 100% successful, but I don't know. Maybe we're moving into a, a period of time in history in comics making that maybe it'll become more, more acceptable and it'll become easier to... Uh, sell the not only the idea but the actual product you know actual comic book in a virtual way but at a physical comic book convention who knows but um yeah all right bye <laughs>